would like you to put your hands together for Kim Street. Thank you. Aha. I work in the museum, and I love my job. I've been working in the museum for quite a long time, and the museum is full of over a million objects. And together, they tell the story of Sheffield and its people over 8,000 years. It really is the world under one roof. Our collections are huge. We have collections of social history and archaeology and natural sciences. We have lots and lots and lots, nay, thousands of knives and forks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we don't have very much of, though, are objects and stories about Pittsmoor. And I think that's quite an issue, and it's something that matters to me very much. When I first came to Sheffield, uh, it was in 1986 to do a degree in history at Sheffield City Polytechnic. It was two years after the end of the miners' strike, and 90%, probably about 90% of jobs in the steel industry had gone. And Sheffield was big and dirty and terrifying, utterly terrifying. I remember driving through Brightside and it being dark and black and we had this car full of stuff and had lost half of it on the motorway. And then we got to Brightside and it was filthy and black and terrifying. But I absolutely loved it. I loved it. I loved Sheffield, and we moved to Pittsmore, and I love Pittsmore. In 1989, I started working at the museum, at the Industrial Museum, as a volunteer in the social history team. And in 1991, I got my very first job, the best job in the world, as the curator of social history. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about social history. Really, social history is the stuff of people's lives. The collection is formed because of the generosity of the people of Sheffield, and it represents um, stuff related to working life and family life and community life. It has all sorts of stuff in the collection, from furniture and wedding dresses to uh, jewellery and um, costumes and shoes, retirement clocks, political leaflets, all kinds of things. One of my favourite things is a walking stick that was used to save the lives of three people during the Great Sheffield Flood of 1864. Fantastic thing, has a fantastic story to tell. So, when I joined the museum as a social history curator, I quickly realised that we had all this stuff, and just about everything had a story to tell, but that sadly, lots of the stories had never been recorded or collected. And lots of the objects, although they spoke to me and were beautiful, actually didn't have a person's story attached to them. And so, like lots of social history curators at that time, I set out trying to change the world. I sat outside of the museum and went to make connections with people living in Parson Cross and the ladies at the Kelvin African Caribbean Lunch Club and people from the Polish community. And together, we started to collect objects that represented those communities and tried to fill gaps in the museum collections, to tell stories about people whose lives weren't represented in the museum's collections at all. But years later, what I realized was that we still had nothing, really, about Pittsmoor and its people. So between um, 2003 and 2006, we did a project in Pittsmoor called Burn Grieve Voices, and I, I imagine many of you were involved in that in one way or another. And people told us lots of brilliant stories, um, and we together compiled a history of Burn Grieve. And it was quite an exciting um, time for us. It was an, an opportunity to tell stories about the city that this area of the city hadn't been told before, and also to get people from Burngreave into the museum for the very first time. Now, some of those things are still in the museum today, and if you go in, you can see um, a video about um, corn shops in Burngreave. And our very own Isaac Hansen, who I think was six at the time, talks about buying sweets on a Friday, which was Sweetie Day, and he's now six foot tall. So worth going to have a look at that. But what I realized about the social history collections was that they really tell the story of life. They tell the story of birth 
and of death and about all the things in between in people's lives. And really, I wanted to see Burngreave tell the story of its births and its marriages and its life and its deaths. And so we began together to try and, and gather those stories. And sadly, even though Burngreave voices were so successful, we probably ended up with about five objects from that project. Lots and lots of wonderful stories, some beautiful portraits, but about five objects. Now, you might think, well, what does that matter? Does it matter at all? whether we have objects to represent people in our collections. Well, for me, it really does matter. The objects in my house tell me a lot about this place. It makes me feel rooted to this place. Um, and so I think it does matter that we have objects around us and that we have objects in the museum that tell us about this place. I really love being able to go into the corner shop in the, in the museum and the butcher's shop and to see the kind of shop that my nan bought her pork chops in. I love that. I love being able to see the Furby that I bought for my kids at Christmas that never worked, that I spent a whole afternoon trying to give back. I love to be able to see that. And the museum is a place where you can do that, where you can see things that remind you of your past, remind you of your present, help you to imagine the future. So, Burn Grieve Voices then, we gathered about five objects for our collections, and I'm just going to show you a few of them. They weren't all from Burn Grieve Voices, but I'm going to show you some of the things in the collections that relate to Pittsmore and Burn Grieve. This one is The View from Rock Street by Herbert Slater in the 1920s, and the little turreted building um, is... Um, roughly on Fox Street and was demolished, I think, in the 1930s, soon after this picture was taken. But what a fantastic view of the Sheffield from Rock Street. This is um, Norwood Hall. This was um, painted, we think, in the late 18th century. It was built in the early 18th century, and it's a Queen Anne brick-built building that was sadly demolished in 1976. I heard a, no, isn't it a disaster? This is the Burngreave Bomber. This was donated to us through the Burngreave Voices project. I think it's possibly also a Pittsmore Pram Push exhibit. I think that's really what it is. Um, and it has the name Josh written on the seat. We don't know who Josh is. If you know who Josh is, give us a shout. We've also got the Pittsmore Horde. This was donated to um, the, the city in 1907. And the collection is a collection of silver coins and the pot. This is the broken pot that you can see here that, was, um, that the coins were found in. And this is the documentation about the coins telling us that they were found on Scott Road in Pittsmore in 1907. Fantastic collection, and it's on display in the museum now. This is Maggie's bear. This is Maggie Adams Langley's bear. Um, she and her dad uh, had a butcher's shop on Gower Street, and she told a story about how Edward Bear, this is the bear, was given to her on her eighth birthday. But actually, it wasn't a favorite bear, but what it's wearing is her granddad Love Loveless's glasses. You can't really see them very well there. Um, but she'd always wanted a real teddy, and this was a real teddy. But unfortunately, he was a bit more hairy and a bit scratchy, like real teddies were. And the teddy she really loved was the scruffy, soft one that was cuddleable. And this is um, some of the things that came out of the Burngreave voices. This is, you might recognize him, Mr. Patel from the Burngreave wine shop, who you can still see, whose face you can still see in the museum today. So I asked the question, does it matter? Does it really matter whether we've got objects or not? Well, I, I do think it matters. I'd like to see um, Pittsmore and its people represented in our museum collections. I'd like us to, to be there amongst all the collections that represent the people of Crooks and of Ecclesfield and of Ecclesall and all those areas of the city. We need to be there too. We need to absolutely be in the museum collections. Um, so I think if it matters to you in the same way that it matters to me, then I'm asking you to do a few things. What I'd like you to do is to choose an object, any object that you feel represents your life in Pittsmore now. One object, it can be from the past, it can be from the present, it can be from the future. I'd like you to think about that object 
and tell the story of that object. I'd like you to consider giving it to the museum. I'd like you to write down that story of that object and share it with me. I'd like that object, ideally, to fit in a box no bigger than that. <laughs> ideally. <laughs> and um, if you feel that that's something that you prefer to do and you want to give it away, then what we would do in return is look after that object. We will care for it for you. We will put a tiny, tiny number underneath it that no one will ever see that connects that object to you and to your story. We will display it for Pittsmore. We will keep it for Pittsmore. We will make sure it's there amongst the history of this city. If you'd like to do that, then please think about it. Please give it to me, and I will put Pittsmore in a box. Thank you. Thank you.